Okay, guys, I am back for a short time. It is a snow day in New York City, and it's coming down pretty hard. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages. It's towards the end of the year, so I wanted to just touch base with you guys, and thank you so much for all of your views and for all of your comments. And I'm just going to spend the next couple of days before the end of the year going through your comments and um, answering some of your questions. So if you have had questions uh, over the next few days before the end of the year, I hope to have helped you and answered your questions and um, we could all move forward. Like I said, it's been a great year. I get the... Uh, the lovely email from YouTube that says um, 422 comments 670 days ago I joined YouTube um, likes 4,082 shared videos 3,211 and it's great to see that you guys are so into it and I'm glad you like the videos and um, I hope to do more of it actually I will be doing more of it um, if you want to know what I've been doing I've been inundated with work work from home but happy to at least have some work during these uh, hard times I've been learning browseware and I've had to use browseware for work um, I'm not crossing over to the other side, guys, believe me. <laughs> as much as I love browseware, there are things in Clo that I really, really, really love. So I'm going to show you a couple of those. As we know, the 6.0 has come out. Yay, 6.0. And I'm going to go through some of the things that I've been doing with the 6.0 and some of the things that, um, that I personally like about it. So let's get into it. Let's cut it up. And uh, there'll be more of these coming as I'm taking a few holidays off from work. And I'll be spending some mornings doing the YouTube videos. So let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Uh, right now, there's 4,500 subscribers. And let me go to my, um, my channel. My channel. Yep. 4,500 subscribers. Um, viewers or subscribers so thank you to all my subscribers i don't have to tell you all to smash the like button or um subscribe if you like my video content uh i think i try to make these videos as concise as it is i am all over the place somebody said that in one of the comments yes i am and i clearly clearly own up to it so please try to follow i will try to roll back the banter but thanks to all my viewers. Um, so let's take a look at some of the things that I've been doing. So this is a little swimsuit that I made, a little two for swimsuit. I do work for a swimwear company, so I am uh, very good at getting the swim shapes to be what they are. This is also a print that I did in Procreate learning how to make repeat patterns in procreate so i can use them in my 3d renders um so just a few little things so this is compression here we have some things going on i have the simulate button pressed and she's still moving a little bit what does it all mean i actually made a pose that was specifically for 3d swim if i wanted to take out the avatar i didn't want to get this bunching up everybody knows about the bunching and the the crotch area so this is how i fixed that i made a pose um just manipulated the avatar's bones and i made a pose so i'm going to go here and i'm going to turn on her bones so you can see show x-ray joints so she's going to become invisible and you're going to see her joints this is in your 3D window menu, okay? Now I'm gonna change this to the swim pose. Pose only, maintain avatar size, yes. Now she jumps to the full view. I wanted to kinda zoom in a little bit so you can see. So now I posed her like this, why? So that 
I don't get the crotch crunch. Yes, I said crotch crunch. So I could still go in here and smooth it out just a little. Just a little bit. Because, you know, sometimes you're using an actual pattern. And these avatars, sometimes their poses don't, uh, are not conducive to actual pattern shapes and human being shapes. So now you have a nice smooth crotch there. Use the pose. Of course, it's not something that you're going to render, but if you decide to, um, hide the avatar you'll see that it's much much nicer and smoothed out okay instead of making the crotch teeny teeny tiny and then having to edit it when you actually want to make a pattern there's an idea actually making one of the garments that you make we're going to talk about that in uh just a second here so I have like a little bit of a sheen on the on the fabric. I put some metallic on it because you know sometimes with swimwear it has like that little shine on it. So I'm just going to take some time to do a couple of things. I'm noticing some things are a little weird right here and I'll tell you why. Because on my pattern I only have rubber on one side. What happened was I added rubber to the full uh, pattern piece, but it was actually without the dot in the middle. Once I added the dot in the middle, it only applied the elastic to one side. So I'm going to go ahead and apply, apply my swim elastic to this side. And for swimwear, I found the best. Uh, parameters to be 2.3 for your strength for your strength and for the ratio 96 and that kind of gives it a little bit of a, a tautness if you need it to be stretch and rigid you can go ahead and add elastic and seam taping that will make it a rigid uh, like a rigid elastic you have your stretch, but it also will bring your measurement uh, To be more Sturdy it won't be like a flimsy uh, flimsy little elastic So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our avatar back. We can go to display avatar show avatar So I'm gonna go ahead and simulate and we're gonna see how it kind of straightens out yeah, so it's kind of before it was hiking. If you want to rewind, now it's a little straighter. So that's kind of the rigidity that you need. Let's try to add it to the bottom and see what happens if it straightens out even more. If we add elastic 2.3 and 96 and seam taping on the bottom. Yeah, it might look ugly. But look how straightens out that whole under bus swimwear line looking pretty nice if i do say so myself yes so those are some of the little things that i do for my swimwear um for making you necks and stretch you have to put it at an angle they almost need to be kissing and your neckline needs to be shorter than your uh it needs to be on an angle at your shoulder so I'm just going to pull this in just a little bit more, a little more, a little more. So it's kind of like a keyhole loop, smooth it out a little bit, straighten it out. And then I'll do the back side. I don't know why I have these so close together. So yeah, there have been a lot of new people making videos in Clo, and I say bravo, bravissimo. Um, there's so much more to learn. Of course, Clo puts out their own videos, which I do love and I do watch. Um, they're fast. <laughs> so it's kind of like, 
a blur sometimes you have to rewatch it. I'm sure you rewatch my videos as well over time. Um, but uh, it shouldn't be like that. This should give a little more details, but I'll try to do that in my videos when uh, simulate. So that kind of came in just a little bit. Now this has got elastic on the neckline. That's why it moves so slow. Uh, when you add elastic and you use the uh, the hands to pull the garment around, it adds more tension to the default fabric. I am not using the default fabric. I'm using a custom stretch fabric um, so that I can get the stretch look that I want to achieve. There is a video about swimwear where I do give that away, so you can go ahead and look that up. And then I'll just keep the simulation going. And so now you know about the crotch. It still is wiggling a little bit. I have her, in order to get the swimwear really close, see how close it is to her body? I click on her figure over in the property editor, skin offset. It's usually set to three. So as you can see, that pushes it out, that pushes it not close to the body. So what I've learned to do is change it to one and it brings it in closer. I don't know what 0.5 does, but I like one, it looks wearable. There's also a way uh, for you to make the swimmer look a little more realistic. One of the things that I do is for the pieces, I tend to, yeah, I've got the thickness up to 3.5 for everything. So when you see it in the render, you're gonna see it with a little bit of thickness. Right now I don't have any stitching on it, but we'll add stitching. Let's just take a look at that render. Stop simulation first, because you know if you don't stop it, you're gonna get that little pop-up window that annoys everyone so annoying they should give you a okay yes or no button do you want to stop simulation before rendering yes so you see how it kind of looks a little bit thick How about that print? I think I was up late one night making circles and dots. <laughs> and then recoloring them like in like six different colors. So, um, you know, it's fun. Procreate is fun. You know, 3D is fun. Combining everything together is really fun. So speaking of combining everything together, we're going to look at one of Clo 3D's uh, new features for skin off they they have a new um, feature in the drop down window you can make the avatar skin now you see it added a lot more pixels and it actually is like a sub layer that allows light to be uh, reflected as you can see it so now when you put the light on her skin it will show a reflection I want to see if I can you see the difference in the te in the texture of the skin they give you a little bit of a orange peely type But what that's going to do, see that glow, that, that glow is gone. It's going to be actually on the inside. So let's see if we can change some of the lighting properties and we'll see what it looks like in the render. Hmm. Yeah, you see how her skin is her skin is popping. Let's bring up the intensity of the light a little bit. 
Yes. So she has a bit of a warm glow on her body and arms and not her legs. So actually the skin offset uh, is, uh, not the skin offset, I'm sorry, the skin texture in rendering is sort of absorbing the light. Let's look at her face because her face is and her neck is two different textures. So let's look at the face. So you see how her neck is like got a nice warm glow to it. It's even got a little bit of a reflection under here. But her face is sort of flat. Not warm enough. Let's add it to her face and see what happens. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Oh my God. So many people love it. So now there's another thing that I like to do with the skin, but only for rendering higher resolution. We're going to talk about that next. Higher resolution rendering. Look at that ear. Now, she's got a couple little jagged edges here on the ear. What can we do? Let's see if I changed my mesh. If I can't change my mesh on her face. We're going to get back to that. So anyway, so yes, I have a little bit of a higher, higher, uh, what do you call that? Shine to the fabric. Not really liking it, but let's take a look. Give it a little texture and a little shine. So it could look more like swimwear. So now you see it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. When you go up close, you can see the difference in the top and the texture from a flat default fabric with no uh, map and nothing applied to it. Let's take off the metallic. And this fabric is an orange one. And let's just take off everything. Let it be flat. So you see the flatter, the flatter the fabric, the richer the color. This is like getting like a sheen over it. And that's it. So let's talk about what's happening in the industry. Let's talk about, um, I'll post this on uh, my Instagram. I'll post it on the Instagram once it's finished so you guys get to see the behind the scenes, a little bit of the, now look at this leg. Let me show you something in my pattern. A lot of times you see this when you get patterns on your own, you see this weird shape. This weird shape, it gives it the nice coverage. You can smooth it out. This hook right here makes your leg line look a little more smooth transition over the hip instead of like a V. A lot of times you see that people will have like a V shape on the back. You need this little hook in order for it to like just round the leg. All right. So let's go back to attention pose.
One thing I, I noticed that I kind of did not like, this model's a size 8, by the way. Is this size 8 model? Custom avatars. Oh, Danny's a 4, Kayla's an 8. That's not size 8 model. Hold on. Danny. Kayla. Lonnie. Is it Lonnie? It is Lonnie. Lonnie is a size 8. So I took the uh, measurements for a standard size 8. I made her about 3 inches taller than an average person. And that's how I created my avatar. Uh, so whatever fits a size 8, that's her. Yep, I try to make uh, sizes for each avatar up to size 12. And then after that, I use um, the regular cloak uh, sizes. ASTM. Um, yeah, man, Clo Maternity. I need to do a whole video on Clo Maternity because it's just weird. Okay. So uh, let's talk about what's going on in the market. I think I said that 11 times. I thanked you guys for all of your uh, views and comments. Um, and that's it. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with the community. Um, <laughs> I, I have some questions and some votes, but I think I'm going to start doing some more community things and uh, getting you guys involved a little bit more. And uh, so I got this interesting post today in my mailbox. This is the latest one that I did. This is using a DAS 3D model. And I created the swimsuit. If you go, you can see the back. If you go to my, uh, what do you call that? My uh, stories. Oh, I don't know how to get to my stories, guys. I don't know. Is this it? Oh, this is the dragon shirt had a lot of fun making that this is like a velvet applique dragon shirt my shirt pattern I hate cuffs if anybody doesn't know that I hate cuffs I'm gonna try to do a whole video on shirts um, Michaela how are you so somebody reposted this uh, in a Russian website and I was like cool thanks for the repost but I don't know. I don't like, I don't know how I feel about just my stuff just being everywhere. But the more the merrier, the more people get to know about what I do is awesome. Um, this is my favorite, favorite model. Okay. Yeah, my Twitter journey is not going so well. Guys, I, um, 2020 has taken a toll on me. Some of my family members had gotten the virus and um you know just living in a new house for the first year of course houses have their own issues these are some of my das 3d avatars i enjoy making them and uh, i found a new resource that i'm going to share with you in a video after i test it out um some of these people look like real people. She does not, however. She does look like a doll. She kind of looks like a doll. So these are my early, early ones. If you guys look on my page, you will be encouraged. I don't know what that sound was. Uh, if you scroll all the way down, you will see and be encouraged at how far I have come over the past year, year and a half. I've been doing clothes for three years, but I just started getting like into the community and, uh, you know, trying out different things. So if you go way, 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 I don't even know what my first, of course, my first post was the yellow dress. They only got 16 likes. So if you watch this video, you will let me know that you watched this video by scrolling all the way down to my first post and posting a comment saying thank you hello love the yellow dress there it is so this was my first video it did so well it got 51,000 views so far um 
And it was just me like putting together this garment from a photograph. It was not technical. It was pretty much squares uh, with shaping, <laughs> making the pattern the best way I knew how and finishing the garment the best way I knew how. And this was 2019 February. So we're about to be two years in. And if you go through, you will see how one could progress. This was my first time using Daz. She's got like two raccoon eyes. This you'll recognize from um, the Digitals video. Uh, the Digitals with Cameron and Lavi Swimwear. This is the same thing that I used back in 2019. I used that same scene that they use and it's all pink and everything. Um, I may go back and redo that because that is a beautiful, beautiful um, asset from Daz 3D. So you guys can go on Daz and you can get that and uh, manipulate it in so many different ways. Cameron uh, really gave a good tutorial online. So you guys can go ahead and look at that and you can see how to make the avatars walk and you can buy the clothes from the swimwear video. And uh, it's, it's really good. It's really good. And, you know, I hope it inspires people to be uh, more creative and have their own designs on walking models, but it is a little frustrating. So I started using Daz. Man, I was only getting like 22 likes. <laughs> But I was learning, so I was happy. So if you notice how everything is kind of like skin tight, everything was skin tight. I didn't really notice about like how things were supposed to drape and fit. Kind of when you start using Clothe 3D, you feel like everything needs to be like on the body. And it doesn't. Someone uh, asked me about the fit maps. So I'm going to look at the fit map for this one. So you see here, what does that tell me? What is this fit, fit map telling me? Over here is good. Over here, I could use a, a little, uh, little bit in the back hip. But is it the back hip or is it the front hip? It's the back hip. So let's see what happens. Where is this, right? Over here. So I'm going to just take this out just a little bit. This is not a symmetrical pattern. Please don't yell at me. Turn off render. Would you like to turn off the render to simulate? Yes. So that's telling me there's something. Now there is a bit of compression here. I don't know that I, I need this compression in the crotch. So this is how you know like something may be uncomfortable on the person wearing it. Red means I cannot wear this. Blue means this is comfortable and nice. Green, for swimmer, I like to stay somewhere around here. So what is happening here? happening there Okay, so it did not like the fact that I had elastic on this. I'm going to go ahead and put the elastic back because I want elastic there. Right? Maybe I need to make this 4.5 and make this 90. Hmm. That didn't help. <laughs> 
It is trial and error, guys. I want it to look like this, but I also want it to fit. So, what needs to happen? Ever so slightly in that area, I want to release. And let's see what happens. Nope, so it is pulling. If I give her more, she might like me. She likes me a little bit much more like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put seam tape. Yes, guys, this video is all over the place, but I'm showing you the fit map. Somebody wanted to know why. I'm going to put seam tape in here. Bam. Let's simulate. So that's kind of holding it together. Right? You want to make your the person actually wearing it, even if it is the avatar. So now that I lengthen this, I need to shorten the other thing. And no, I'm not measuring. Do not beat me up. Some of you really, 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 I'm not making a pattern. I'm making a visual presentation of a style. If I decide to make this pattern, of course I will make everything symmetrical. Put in all of my base lines. Yep, so that's what it means. This crotch is really super tight on her. The hips are made a little bit better. Little, little better. Not on this side. And as you can see, my triangle mesh is very, very small. That's because I was ready to render, so I made it small. Usually, uh, I wait till the last minute to do that. So, this cross back is a little tight, but that's okay. Because it's swimwear, in order for it to stay up, you need it to have some kind of hold somewhere. But that's what your uh, mesh is going to tell you. Hold on, I'm going to get another style. And let's look at a woven piece. 